Hey guys, I'm back like I promised. Welcome to another devlog of my VR escape room like game called Project Blank. Let's start with the small changes and updates I've done in the past two weeks. The first thing on the list is this ugly keycard reader. Like, what is this grey box? You can't even tell what it does. So I decided to fix it. Now we have a new texture, a little beep sound for player's immersion, and working LEDs. Please ignore the untextured keycard, I'll get to that sometimes in the future. Picking up that keycard reminded me of something. The so-called advanced grab interactor. For far too long I used Unity's default grab system and didn't even modify it. Alright, to be completely honest, I did modify it a little bit. I added a free grip functionality. This means if you grab an object, it won't snap right into your hand, it stays in place. After Unity basically crammed this feature into one checkbox, I'm proud to announce that I modified this system. Now we can play whatever sound we want when picking things up. Yes, I know, that doesn't sound like much, but look. It is a custom script I can now build upon and shape it to my needs. Plus, it is so much easier to do things in code than in Unity's UI. Things like... were really annoying. And there's even more good news. Remember the last devlog? The wait feature I had? I broke Unity and almost lost all the progress. Yeah, I fixed it. I don't want to bother you too much with a solution, so let's just say a first grader could fix this. But my brain said, no, I don't feel like working right now. So it took a little while, but now it's working. I can create more natural dialogue between you, the player, and other characters. Hey, can you hear me? All right. Let's look at some new things regarding object interaction. First of all, this big machine is now fully functional. When we look at it a bit closer, we have some rectangles, some circles, but what does it do? And how do you start it up? It's simple. First, you get a manual with instructions, then push these buttons in correct order. After that, you will have to find a VHS tape and put it into the machine. When this is done, press the start button and voila, wheels are spinning, which means you are now officially recording. In case you're wondering, yes, I made my own shader graph for this. And once I texture the whole thing in Substance Painter, this temporary wheel will be replaced and look a lot better, so the player won't even notice that it's just a spinning texture. If you don't like this temporary texture, I can change it to, I don't know, pizzas? Wait, no, 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 I have a better idea. You, you will, will now like, like and subscribe. Like and sub we also have some animations down here. When you get the tape close enough and it will collide with the trigger here, script will delete the model you are currently trying to shove it in there set this model to be visible and then play the animation we saw earlier. Alright, since the recorder still needs a little bit of work and there's nothing else to talk about, let's continue with one success and one fail I had. Before the first devlog I used this setup for my locks. It works something like this. We have a key with a special tag and we have a lock with a trigger. When this specific key will collide with a lock, the lock says Ok, I see you have a tag I'm looking for, so I'll tell this drawer to unlock. Sounds simple and smart, right? But it's actually stupid. There are just too many things to set up, like tags, scripts, sockets, interaction layers. Instead, I created one script for both key and the lock. Every lock and a key has an ID. Only locks and keys with the same ID can interact. This is a setup for key and this one is for a lock. Check this box, the object is a key. Leave it unchecked, it's a lock. Simple and efficient. You can also play sounds and animations. Now for the fail of the week. 
my game needs voice commands. It will be used to interact with anything or anyone you can imagine and since my dialogue system is now fully functional, this was a perfect time to create a voice recognition script and use both systems together. Spoiler alert, I have failed miserably. First of all, Unity's default voice recognition solution is painfully slow. Second of all, I'm not sure why, but sometimes it throws Unity for like 3 seconds after I said something. And finally, the biggest problem is just stop recognizing my words. I'm not sure how, but I need it to work. Maybe I'll buy some offline solution on SS Store because I'm not feeling like writing a whole new system from the ground up. Plus, tiny problem, I have no idea how voice recognition works. Hopefully in the next devlog I will have a decent solution. Probably not. But it's gonna be all for today. If you like this devlog, maybe check out the previous one where I made the dialogue system.